The Six Characteristics of a Civilization by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. Introduction. Welcome to the birth of history. In this short unit, we will explore what a civilization is. Through the knowledge gained about civilizations, students will be able to analyze, explain, and eventually evaluate how each of the upcoming units fits, or does not fit, the classification of a civilization. But the big question is, what is a civilization, Mr. Amster? A civilization is an advanced state of human society. There are six characteristics that define a civilization. Any idea what they are? They are economy, government and geography, written language, social class, culture, and population. And altogether, they make up elements of what is a civilization. A society may have five of those things and not six, and we wouldn't count it as a civilization. But be careful to not associate civilization with civilized and everyone else's barbarians. The biggest mistake people make is sometimes saying that the barbarian simply is not me. And that's wrong, so let's get rid of that. Simply it means that you have a civilization, and the people that live in there are citizens. Please take a moment and highlight the six characteristics of a civilization. If you need to pause the video, feel free to do so. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Actually, go back. Advanced state. Economy. Civilizations must be able to produce a stable supply of food. Societies can only thrive with plenty of food. It makes sense, right? You need food to be successful. Otherwise, what are we doing here? One of the way, or the two of the ways this is done is through the domesticating of animals and agriculture, and this allows them to create a food surplus. It's helped even more with the development of metallurgy, or in reality, metals, which comes in in the Bronze Age during 3000 BCE. Notice here the person is farming with his domesticated animals. Why is it so important? agriculture and domestication versus hunter and gatherers. It's simple. It's because it allows everybody else to do other things. Yeah, being a farmer is not an easy job, but the ability to produce a lot of food with a limited amount of people makes everybody's life much, everyone else's life much easier. Just don't tell that to the farmers. That's a lot of work. Please take a moment and highlight produce stable food supply, surplus, domesticating, and agriculture. Nothing else. Stable, produce stable food supply, domesticating, agriculture, surplus. Please feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, we are going to keep going. Social class. Civilizations have a social structure. This is controlled through jobs and social levels or status. And in ancient times, and I want you to write this in, it depended on birth. Who was your dad? If your dad was up on the social class, you would have been up on the social class. The social pyramid goes in order with the ruler, or the least amount of people at the top ruling, 
Right below him, serving him usually, is the landowners, the priests, and the government officials. Below them, an even bigger group, are the common class. Merchants, craftspeople, farmers. And the last of the slaves. Now, slavery is a lot different in ancient times than it is now. It's very brutal, and it's terrible. But they're not picking up people and putting them often into the same environments. In some ways, it, it depended really on the civilization. Some, like the Greeks, were brutal and never freed their people, specifically the Athenians. But other societies f freed their slaves after they had served them for a while. It just depends. If you notice here, you can see what a social class looked like. There's little, a little less, a little bit more people, even more, and then the slaves are at the bottom. They may not be as big as this number in the common class, but they're still below them. Let's take a moment and think. What is the social class, social structure pyramid at Cohasset? We have administration, students, teachers. What would that order look like? Hmm. Please take a moment and try to fill that in for you, putting it number one to four. Four being the bottom, one being the people at the top. And see if you can add in one other group of people. Maybe if you add in types of teachers, grade levels of students, types of administration. Le maybe there's someone else above the principal that you want to add in. Please take a moment and highlight social structure, controlled, jobs, please feel free to pause the video, otherwise we're going to keep going. Geography and government. A civilization needs defined boundaries. That's where the geography comes in. You have to know where it is, and you have to have a, gen a general idea of its boundaries. North, south, east, west. Where, where, does the end, where does their rule extend to? Government is much more complicated. A government provides the people with protection and order. They defend them and order. And all the people ask in return from the, gov from the people or what the government asks, is for taxes and to serve them. Do what they say, and that will help keep the order. Pretty straightforward, huh? And this is a symbiotic relationship. If both sides do their part and do their part well, a civilization can be very, very successful. The government is in charge of enforcing laws, construction, leading the army, and distributing food. The people, their job is to follow the rules, be a part of the construction, be in the army. And that's what they have to do. And of course, instead for them, they pay taxes. Make sure you're writing that down. Now, every civilization has its own style of ruler. The most common ones we hear about are kings and presidents. But think about this. The pope is a leader. He's on top of, the, of his social structure. Pharaohs, as we'll get to Egypt. Even the Senate is a type of ruling party, specifically in Rome and in Greece, and an oligarchy. It's when you have two to three rulers. How does the government help you? And think about these. Please take a moment and highlight government, enforcing laws, construction, leading army, distribution of food, defined boundaries, 
and highlight people, which is not written down here, but you should have written down, pay taxes. Highlight that. And if you look down here, you can actually see a ruler ruling over his subjects. Please, of course, feel free to pause the video or go back if you need to listen to it again. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Probably my favorite one. Highly developed culture. Culture is a way to show what a civilization values, what's important to them. A civilization must have a highly developed culture, including the arts, paintings, music, all of that is art, types of art. Religion, who do they pray to? Or whom? Or how many do they pray to? Architecture, notice the buildings. They'll tell you a lot about their values and their skills. And learning, do they even want to learn? What do they do to help people learn and get smarter? What culture do you see today? And what is religion's role in America society today? Does it, do you think it's really strong? Or is it very, pretty weak? Remember, we don't talk about our beliefs in this class. We talk about the fa what our straight fact. Your belief is a very powerful thing because it's your culture. It's who you are. And I know you're proud of it. But different people have different beliefs. And we should, as, as learners and eventually adults, we must be respectful of other people's belief systems. Here's an example, by the way, of a ziggurat, which was the temple in Sumer and in Mesopotamia, actually, in Holm. And this is an early lyre. It's sort of like a harp. Please take a moment and highlight highly developed culture, including art, religion, architecture, learning. Population. All civilizations must have a concentration of population in distinct areas or cities. Basically, they have to have people that live near each other. Very straightforward, very simple for you. Notice here, a lot of people live here. The dark red is where there's a large concentration of people. The last one is written language. All civilizations must have a highly developed written language. They have to be able to communicate. The beginning of history means the beginning of writing. The first known civilization was cuneiform, or cuneiform, depending on how you hear it, created by the Sumerians. Also, an example of writing can be pictographs. What would your life be like, though, without any writing? Could you survive? Think about, until you go to bed tonight, what do you do that involves a lot of reading? Even using a controller for your TV requires you to use pictographs, or to use written language. Please take a moment and highlight history means writing, first known language, cuneiform created by Sumerians. The end. Please make sure that you go back and listen to this video again, because it'll help.